In Palestine, the indiscriminate Israeli bombardment of Gaza continues and authorities registered over 1,000 dead and more than 260,000 displaced. Pope Francis condemned terrorism and extremism in the Middle East and called for peace built on justice. And in Russia, the Energy Week got underway under the theme, the new global energy reality built for the future. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Anne Rosabal from the Telesa Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. On Wednesday, the Palestinian Health Minister said that 1,055 people were killed in the Gaza Strip and 5,184 others were injured in the ongoing Israeli aggression against the Strip for the fifth day in a row. Currently, there are more than 260,000 people displaced. Thousands are sheltered in United Nations Relief and Works Agency facilities. The rest are wandering the streets and rubble. The situation worsens because the electricity company ensured that fuel supply are dwindling while Israel deploys another 3,000 soldiers on the border. At the West Bank, the number of slain Palestinians rose to 23 after the two youths, Ab al-Rahman Fayah and Ali al-Basi, were killed by Israeli occupation bullets in the ANLA Lusa neighborhood in Jerusalem, while 130 others were injured. Palestinian authorities said on Wednesday the gas strip has been left without electricity supply after the only plant was shut down after Israel disconnected its network from the enclave in retaliation. The cuts to food and water supplies, and in particular to electricity and fuel, are aimed at suffocating the inhabitants of the area while a cheery and aircraft continue their bombardment. Although the Israeli government claims that these actions are aimed at weakening the Palestinian resistance movements, the siege imposed is mainly affecting the civilian population. Since Saturday, Gaza has suffered more than 600 power cuts. The enclave depends on Israel for its electricity supply, as well as for the import of fuels to power its only plant. The power cuts further aggravate the humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip, I leave the enclaves already overburned, hospital on the brink of collapse. For his part, on Wednesday, Israel Defense Forces IDF confirmed civilians' death toll amounted to 1,200. IDF spokesperson Daniel Hagari detailed the figure of injuries of past 2,900 veterans near the fourth day of war. Hamas military organization crossed all Israeli defense fronts. The authority acknowledged the latest attacks on Ascalon were conducted from the coast. Hamas' sudden incursion triggered the fury of Israel resident settlements to blame the Israeli authority for their lack of attention and protection. The first plane carrying ammunition and air defense supply from the United States landed in Israel. The U.S. announced a shipment of supplies and more security assistance to Israel to fight the Palestinian Islamic resistance movements. Tel Aviv assured that this shipment will allow significant attacks in preparation for additional scenarios. The Palestinian organization Hamas assured that Washington provided Israel with the means to continue committing war crimes against Gaza. In this contest, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan warns that the president of the U.S. of the U.S. aircraft carrier, General Four, is a harbinger of major mass aggress against the Gazzati population. This was stated in the middle of a press conference in the company of the Austrian Foreign Minister Karl Nehammer in Ankara, the capital of the country. The Turkish president announced the huge U.S. presence in the region saying that Washington maintains more than 20 illegal bases in which it could be training and arming terrorist organizations and refer in particular to the presence of U.S. troops in Syria, the head of state become another voice to reject the blockade imposed on Gaza.
On Wednesday, during his weekly general audience, Pope Francis condemns terrorism and extremism in the Middle East and calls for a peace built on justice, dialogue and the courage of brotherhood. Terrorism and extremism do not help to resolve the conflict between Israelis and Palestinians, but fear of hatred, violence and revenge and only made both sides suffer. What the Middle East needs is no war but peace, a peace built on justice, dialogue and the courage of brotherhood. The leader of the Chechen Republic, Ramzak Adirov, on Wednesday, calling all Muslims and citizens of the world to fight for the cause of Palestine. The Chechen leader said that if the conflict is not stopped in favor of Palestine, the escalation could be much worse. For the second time since the beginning of the escalation, the leader called for world unity. He also called to stand with Palestine and stop the Israeli occupation. Kadirov offered his troops to carry out peace actions in Palestine and reiterated that Israel has plundered the territory of Arabs. We fully support the actions of Palestine because their land was once taken over by Israel and kept them isolated. They have no freedom of speech and today I'm against the war and I ask everyone to stop this war from spreading to the world. Once again I call on all Muslims, all citizens and our state to support the truth and stop this war or send us there as peacekeepers. We will identify and stop the ones who are wrong, the ones who are right we will identify. We will stop those who continue to fight. Long life justice. A lot is great. In Brazil, movements and organizations and the set of South Paulo mobilized in solidarity with the people of Palestine. Representatives of popular movements, organizations, diplomatic representations and trade unions held protests in response to Israeli offensive launch last Saturday. In this way, they ask for an analysis of the current conflict in the Middle East with the aim of reaching an understanding of peace between both parties. Let's take a short break. But remember, you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, World of Fine News, in different formats, new dates, some more. Our study is coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back. Guatemalan President Alejandro Yamantet accuses President-elect Bernardo Arevalo of civilizing the country, breaking his promise for the best government transition in the country's history. The head of state released a letter addressed to the President-elect in which he made serious accusations against Arevalo. According to President Yamantet, his successor distances himself from what he calls the incidents of ungovernability. Yamate refers to the protests against prosecutors and judges that have put democratic stability at risk. According to the Samia movement, various organizations and regional governments, and more recently the Puebla Group. President Yamate challenges the rebel to assume the consequences of his actions. Hundreds of inmates belonging to Rotel Agantuk, the biggest Paraguayan prison in which housed the 3,000 convicts and its 15 blocks from Assumption's downtown. Minister of Justice Angel Barcini is said to be working on a legal solution. Barcini made no comments on the abduction of the prison's director, Adam Jesus Gonzalez. Local media reported that several prisoners threw rubble to officers as they set fire on mattress inside. A spokesperson of the local police informed mutineers to 10 guards and 30 women, likely visitors at hostages. The mutineers demanded Barcini's resignation to stop the riot. About 30 women visitors and 10 colleagues on duty. We don't know what's happening, but there is a demand from the hotel clan that the minister come and talk to the clan. And they want to clarify that the policeman Oliver Lescano supposedly is not dead.
farmer Carlos Eliseo Garrido is one of the best milk producers in Havana. The vino of Cuba on the move visited his dairy farm on the outskirts of the Cuban capital to learn the secrets of his success. Whoever wants to tell the life of farmer Eliseo Garrido has to go out at dawn, no matter if it rains or if it's dark. At this time, he has already started his working day at the La Valeriana farm in Bacuranao, Guanabacoa, about 20 kilometers east of Havana. How many kilometers to Eliseo's farm? We are about two kilometers away. And the road is good? The road is a bit muddy now. There's a bad weather. It is raining and bad, but hey, you can get there. There is nothing impossible that cannot be done. The words of this farmer anticipated what the Cuba on the Move team would find at the Valeriana farm. It happens that Eliseo gets up earlier than the sun and always surprises at dawn. His land have an area of 33.55 hectares with 90 cattle, of which 32 are half-breed cows. Telesur found Eliseo milking La Peluda, while his son was milking Gacha. What is the most difficult thing in the life of a farmer? For me, well, for me, I have found nothing difficult in life. Yes, why? Because I solve all the problems mounting the aroma plants. If it has to be done, that's not difficult for me. How is the life of a farmer? Well, I'm always milking mountain, taking care of the cows and all that. How old are you? Me? I'm close to 100 years old. Yes? And what time do you get up? How do you work? At 4 in the morning. And how many cows do you milk a day? I'm milking right now 8 cows. About 20 years ago, a dog made Eliseo's right arm unusable, but he continued to work. For this, although he recognizes that the U.S. blockade is harmful, he says it cannot be the excuse not to produce. The blockade is not a fault, but it wasn't necessary was to take care of the cows and sell food, not to lose the plant like you see over there. That's a cow farm that produced 500, 600 liters of milk. Today it does not produce anything. Down here we have another one, the owner of that one produced 400, 500 liters of milk. Today it is a small cow farm and it is producing, I think that if it reached 100 liters it is a lot. And why? Because they didn't care for the cows and the farm completely lost its aroma plants. That's the problem with the milk. Today if they had followed the rhythm, not to let the land be lost and take care of the cattle. The milk would not be missing here, as it is missing. Eliseo belongs to the Credits and Services Cooperative Emiliano Montes de Oca. His annual production plan is 27,000 liters of milk, and they daily deliver over 120 liters, mostly to maternal homes, hospitals, and kindergartens. What difficulties do you have in the farm? The difficulty of the farm, look, we don't have wire, we don't have fertilizer. I think for the cattle there, it's no fumigation, nor for the plants, there is no of that. And then, if there are so many difficulties, how do you manage to be the man who produces the most milk here in the province? Well, that part I don't know. It is a secret of mine. But Eliseo's secret is known by his son, Felo, who milked a cow for the first time at the age of eight. He says he studied up to the 12th grade, but what he likes the most in his life is to milk and tend the cattle. What did your father teach you? Everything I know, he has taught me. I have always been by his side working in the field. You have to work hard and look for solutions to all the problems you face. Is life very difficult for a cattle breeder? No, once you get used to it, it's not difficult. For me, it's not difficult. Almost 100 years old, Eliseo is today one of the best milk producers in Havana. His son says there's nothing like the pure air, the tranquility and the milk of his cows. He assures that, like his father, for him there are no impossibles. Fabiola Lopez, Telesur, La Habana. We have a second show break coming up, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel, Atel Sur English. But you'll be able to rewatch our interviews, top stories, special broadcasts, and more. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's more recent events. Final show break, don't go away. Welcome back. Energy Week begins in Russia, one of the most important platforms in the world energy sector. 
The theme of this year forum is a new level energy reality building for the future in this framework. Delegations are expected to discuss crucial issues such as energy prices, climate change, energy and raw material supply, and the outlook for oil markets. On the oil issue, Russia and Saudi Arabia may discuss in the silence of the forum the challenges and prospects of the sector in the context of the Israeli Palestinian conflict. On Wednesday, Venezuela's executive vice president, Delcy Rodriguez, arrived in Mosul, leading a delegation from his country to participate in the, in the sixth Russian Energy Week. A form of vital importance to address issues of global energy balance and cooperation. Daisy Rodriguez visited six to review the cooperation map of the Russia Venezuela High Level Intergovernmental Decision Commission, which comprises more than 335 agreements. In their social network X, Rodriguez highlighted that the agreements signed on the emergency policy were a shift as part of the commitment of both countries in the defense of the principle for the development of a federal multipolar world order and in favor of the welfare of the most vulnerable people. The Venezuelan executive vice president added that Venezuela has its own voice in the formation of a new multipolar world, free of unilateral coercive measures and respectful of international law. The sixth international forum of the Russian Energy Week is an international event addressing the crucial problems of the energy sector. The forum has been held since 2017 and has immediately become the most important energy efficiency event in Russia or abroad. The event is held on October 11, 30, 2023 at the Managed Central Exhibition Palace in Moscow and is attended by more than 4,000 guests from more than 60 countries. The forum's business program includes more than 30 events divided into thematic blocks, the international agenda, sustainable development and climate, scientific and technological development and digital transformation, and the development of the fuel and energy sector. Speakers and participants will discuss information of global prices for energy supplies and raw materials, the outlook for the oil industry and the climate agenda. The Venezuelan Commission answers questions in the second day of the 139th session of the UN Human Rights Committee. The Foreign Minister of Venezuela, Ivan Hill, added that since the year 2021, the National Assembly has sanctioned more than 67 key laws for the promotion and direction of the civil and political rights of the Venezuelan population. Gilles announced that in the last few years, the U.S. asset control offices have issued 930 sanctions against the country, which limit the capacity of the national government to acquire material, supplies, food and medicines to guarantee the attention to Venezuelans. Indonesia on Tuesday opened the summit of island countries to address the triple planetary crisis and other challenges in the ministerial meeting. Delegates attend the fifth ministerial meeting of the Archipelago and Island States Forum in Unusuada, Bali, Indonesia, thank October 10, 2023. In an opening speech on the island of Bali, Indonesian Foreign Minister Reno Marsudi said the Archipelago and Island States Forum is being held at a timely and historical moment to the wrecks of threatened island nations in particular. The minister highlighted that the leader summit on Wednesday will be first to be hosted by the forum with the hope of facing global challenges. Triple planetary crisis, namely climate change and rising sea level, marine pollution and biodiversity loss represent an essential danger to our societies, Brenda said in his speech. Regardless of being big or small, regardless of being developed or developing, we share common complex challenges that are intertwined and connected with one another, such as in relation to the rise of sea level, governance of marine resources and marine pollution. Therefore, collaboration and solidarity among archipelagic and island states is very important to produce synergetic, concrete and tactical measures in resolving our common challenges.
And we have come to the end of Mrs. Free. You can find this so many other stories on our website, but there is English.net. And join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. But that's with English. I'm Ana Rosabal. Thank you for watching.